I read about this. But other places, like when he was running for office, they were the only station that played his entire rallies. They played his entire rally from beginning to end. And it was just the little ways, like they criticize him, but the way they criticize him was exactly how Donald Trump wanted to see himself. Oh, he's defiant. Oh, he's speaking to the working class. Oh, he's anti-establishment. Oh, he, he represents the base. And then the way they would talk about the Republicans that would question him, oh, anytime anyone questions them, they just they just go down in the polls, which wasn't true. And even if it was, the polls weren't registering the response to Marco Rubio or Ted Cruz insulting him. The polls were, were always taken four or five days before that point. They were intentionally distorting. And every time Donald Trump would screw up, they would say, oh, well, that's not going to hurt him because his base doesn't care. Even before there was any testing or any way to figure out if people were responding negatively to something that happened, MSNBC, more so than Fox, Fox a lot of times would be like, well, I don't know about that. You know, uh, Donald Trump said this or that. And they were actually more balanced. And CNN, I don't know what the heck they were doing. They were- well, and, 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 and Bill O'Reilly, who was Donald Trump's friend, personal friend, he would call him on stuff. In fact, Bill O'Reilly would yes. say, look, yes. I, I even talked to Donald Trump, but I, I told him, don't do this, don't do that. Right. Do this or right. this instead. So he was saw, he was very critical of him. He was critical. But here's what we found out. So 2020, um, Joy Reid was winning her, her – she was winning her uh, time slot. Who was in the news all the time? Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. Everything was Trump. This year, she's down 56%. Her viewership is down 56%. And 71% of the prime demographic down to 1.2 from uh, 2.7 million or 2.6 million uh, in July of 2020. Without Trump in the White House, all of them have been down, particularly Joe Reid. But MSNBC in general has been suffering. Well, and, and that's... I, I felt- that's a, that's a that's a broadcast thing, and Rush Limbaugh went through this years and years ago. Uh, wow. He became uh, very popular during the um, the Clinton administration, right, and, and right. they and and what the naysayers kept saying is, okay, Bill Clinton's out of office. What are you gonna do now? And right. and basically, he just changed the way he did things. But then he was a like him or hate him, he he was a fantastic broadcaster. He he knew the audience and he amended his topics to to the day, to the news of the day, and whoever was in charge. I mean, but he was a radio broadcaster, which is, and he was a brilliant radio broadcaster, mm-hmm. which is which is a different, and it's a whole different animal than what is going on in the cable news networks. Oh, true. They're connected, but it's a different whole concept of what you're trying to do and how you're trying to project or whatever, the marketing, the advertising, all that's a different, you know, foundation. Um, But, you know, the thing about it is, yeah, I mean, you know, and you could go into, into, you know, I actually did a whole report on on what I found out about and what I noticed about how they were handling that. You know, they didn't do Hillary Clinton any service on that show. And Hillary Clinton ran a lousy campaign. But the point is, is that, that show is on to appeal to a certain group of people. So they get on there and they're talking about black people, this black people. But I don't know any black people that watch that show. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know what I'm saying? And the black folks who do watch it, like I know I talked to my mom and a few other people, you know, a bo- baby boomer black folks I know. And they're like so tired of Joy Reid. Yeah. It's like, dude, shut up. Stop talk, calling everyone racist. You're making things worse for us. Mm-hmm. I hear them say that. You know, these are upper middle class people who worked in their careers. They retired. They voted. They vote moderate Democrat. And they watch Joy Reid and they're like, what the hell are you talking about? What you're saying has nothing to do with most black folks. You're talking about those people who are in these organizations or some of the people down here in South South City who define themselves as like the real ardent warriors of anti-racism. Who follow all those anti all those anti racist academic rules and dogmas, but that doesn't represent all black people or even most black folks. And people, like you said, I think people Dave Chappelle particularly, I think is a serious threat to this um, cancel regime. I think there's no doubt that he's 
he's kind of gotten to him. Oh, I, I think you're right. And, and I think cancer culture, it's almost like if you've, if you've been canceled, that's kind of like a gold star now. Because if anybody gets canceled, they think, wait a minute, let's look a little bit cl- more closely at this person. Because everybody knows that every, most people that get canceled are, are not cancelable. I mean, you shouldn't cancel right. everybody. Anybody. I mean, to me, and I and I, I mentioned this earlier in the broadcast. Unless, unless about, they physically do something or say something horrendously violent or whatever. Well, that's like, there's some people who are like you got to get out. Sure, but yeah, right. As far as, like J K Rowling was not allowed to be part of the of the uh, Harry Potter reunion. Right. And she invented let's Harry put, Potter. <laughs> let's put that in perspective for a second. They canceled the woman who created Harry Potter from Harry Potter. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's just but ridiculous. For saying that she thinks there's a difference between women and trans women, which there is. There, there absolutely is. So I don't, I still don't understand what she's in trouble for. Oh, oh but and, and, she's, and by the way, we, we just got, we just got canceled by some there for agreeing with that. Just so you know. Oh, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, like I said, I've already been fired from South City and fired from <laughs> all the good, wonderful anti-whatever social justice, whatever. You know. Mm-hmm. And you know what? If you're not in trouble with that stuff, then that makes me honestly more suspicious. Sure. Because the people I see who are going off on Dave Chappelle for the trans thing, there's a woman. I, there's a woman I know, and uh, we went to a movie once, and she made a black joke. At a predominantly black movie theater, something about black people being late, like, like black people being late all the time, and uh, me and the black person who was uh, at the taking the ticket thing, we laughed. You mm-hmm. know, this is a white woman. We're like, ha ha ha, whatever. I wasn't offended. Whatever. She made a black joke. But the same person then was saying, Dave Chappelle's got to go. Dave Chappelle. She actually made Dave Chappelle's point. Mm-hmm. She did exactly what Dave Chappelle was talking about, which is. Black folks are supposed to, when you're around these cats, almost every single person I know who's crapping on Dave Chappelle has made some kind of black joke around me at some point. Mm -hmm. And I've never gotten pissed off about it because what's the point of getting pissed off about it? Right. You know, some of them were like, you're the whitest black guy I know. Now, they don't say that anymore because I'm actually not cool with that anymore because I realized how stupid people were about that. Mm -hmm. But both of these people used to say this stuff. And I think it's so funny now that they're like, what they're saying is Dave Chappelle comedy kills trans people. And that's accepted as a fact now. Is that a fact? No, it's Has ri- that been no. researched. Yeah, exactly. It's ridiculous. It's something that they make up. They're saying, well, the people who would listen to Dave Chappelle are now deciding. Now, already they are saying that the, the number of trans people who got killed had increased before that show. Okay. Now I looked it up. Most of the of the 44 who got killed, I guess, of this year, over a majority of them are people of color. Okay? Mm-hmm. Tran- they found that trans folks are four times more likely than the general population to live in poverty. So that has a lot more to do with why they're being killed than some comedian, don't you think? I th- absolutely. But here's the thing. Dave Chappelle is involved in initiatives like Be the Change, and the Tukemi Mutombo uh, operation to actually effectively help people get out of poverty, not simply by getting stupid government policies from Bernie Sanders that will never work because he has no idea what he's talking about. And communism was a really bad idea for a, a rich, prosperous country. But they actually have plans to get people independently, privately owned um, in their process of escaping poverty. He's actually doing that. So while people are slamming on Dave Chappelle for saying something in his comedy skit, he and Kevin Hart and all these other black guys who all of a sudden now they want to slam on because they have a wrong perspective, Ice Cube, whatever, Mm -hmm. they're all doing things to actually help the problem that's partially at the root to why trans people or anyone is getting murdered. Mm -hmm. But they don't care about that because they don't actually care about fixing the problem. They care about controlling people. Yeah, and Dave Chappelle is not controllable, so they need to do something to attack him. And, and you mentioned you mentioned the the the, the poverty uh, perspective, and and that and that is anything. In fact, if you if you look at any reason, almost every time, why did so and so do this? And if you follow the money, you find out why. 
And right. and if you take and you, if your statistic about uh, trans people living in poverty more times than not, um, if they have some money, money does a lot of things to right. let you do a lot of things. It lets you live where you want, not where you must. Right. It lets you buy the things that can make you smile. It can make you if if you if you can't live in a house that's not infested by rats, and if you can't afford a car, and if you can't afford uh, fill in the blank, your life is going to suffer. Whether you're a trans person, a gay person, a straight person, a, a black person, a white person, it doesn't matter. The, the, right. the passport of getting out of anything is more money in your pocket. Right. And for them to, and you know, and when I looked that up, cause I was trying to find like, you know, they, I've never seen a study that indicated they believe that people who kill these 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 people and it's evil, but it's evil to kill anybody. Mm -hmm. Um, what causes them to do that? And they're making again, it's the same thing with the Ahmaud Arbery thing, the same thing with the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, where they're projecting something upon the crime. But I'm not seeing the evidence. I'm not seeing the study. I haven't seen. I can't find it. Like I'm looking up, like you know, this and that. And there's a couple of gender studies analysis of it, but. I'm looking for criminal justice analysis of people who do these things. Before you say Dave Chappelle's killing anyone, shouldn't you have some data to back that up? Yeah. Or you're just saying, well, society hates trans people. Dave Chappelle's making society hate trans people more. Therefore, if a trans person gets killed, it's because of Dave Chappelle. Well, that's... It's ridiculous. I mean, that doesn't make... By that logic, half of these people, more than half of these people who are saying Dave Chappelle is bad. I saw on my Facebook feed saying they don't feel bad for Kobe Bryant when he died with his daughter and eight other people in an airplane crash because he reported he, he was, uh, he was, there was a rape claim against him in 2004, which was dismissed, mm -hmm. which was dropped mm -hmm. because the case fell apart. We, who knows what happened in a situation? Uh, the, the, the girl and he, went back to the room. So it wasn't like Kobe Bryant, you know, saying they went back and were consensually fooling around at some point. And then the woman said, uh, he, you know, he raped me. Who knows what happened? You know what I'm saying? But the case fell apart. Bottom line. Right. In 2004. So you say you're, you're Kobe got what he deserved because, you know, the whole, um, extreme me too thing that was going on in the social networks all rapists you know all charges should be believed which the woman who created me too never said that she never said all rape charges should be believed so that's already a distortion you know but anyway they said that kobe they were sad that kobe bryant died in a plane crash so are they responsible for every black man that gets killed for saying what they said you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They apply a standard to Dave Chappelle that they're not applying to themselves. You know? Exactly. They're saying, oh, that's just how we felt because we want to support survivors. That's fine. I understand. I'm not saying that there isn't a, a, an imperative to respect the survivors of sexual assault. What I'm saying is, do you hold yourself responsible for anyone being killed because you put that on Facebook? Well, then why are you holding Dave Chappelle responsible for killing a trans person for making jokes in something that you can just simply, as Kevin Hart said, if you don't like what you see, just turn the TV off. Yeah. Well, Kevin Hart got <laughs> into know? a lot of problems too, uh, yes. making yes. comments about, about gays. And it was again, like some, yeah, yeah. But, it, but it was something about his, his, his son and his son was doing yes. something and he didn't want his, he, he, he said, hey, I don't want my son to do that. That's gay. And, and yeah. he brought his yeah, own kid, he brought his own kid into it, which was being very personal, but he was doing yeah. it from a humorous standpoint. Now, right. if you, if you don't like a comic who makes jokes about gays or trans people, then, then don't listen to him. Uh, there's a very famous comedian who, uh, she's very successful, Amy Schumer. Right. And and I don't I don't watch her at all. It's not because I find her offensive or I want to cancel her. I don't think she's funny. Yeah, I don't think she's funny either. No, and so but and so I don't watch her. No, I I I couldn't I couldn't tell you much about her humor because a few times I've tried to watch her humor, it, it just it fell she flat. Makes fun of, she makes fun of how big she is, she makes fun of how horny she is mm -hmm. and how horrible men are. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, yeah. And it, to me, it's just, it's, it's, it's not very or, funny. 